We begin segment two with some unfinished business from our last episode. Using images from Susan Rouillet, we charted the life cycle of the little blue herons. Now, the concept of life cycle is one of the aspects of an animal that should appear in a report. Now, another important topic is that of adaptations, something we didn't have time to pursue in episode 75. Now, we reach the point in the research that I find the most interesting. That's the adaptations an animal makes to help it survive and thrive through the changes that are always occurring. Now, these include physical adaptations that involve the body of the animal and the behavior adaptations, which are seen in the actions of the animal. An animal that's rich in adaptations is the beaver. Now, this animal is equipped to alter its environment to its own benefit. An obvious adaptation of beavers is their hard, sharp, and ever-growing teeth. This helps them cut into trees and get their nutrition from the growing part of the tree. Yet that's not the most amazing function of these teeth. Beavers use these sharp teeth to cut down trees. They then use the teeth to carry branches of the tree to build a dam, to impound the water and build their lodge where they'll, where they'll be safe in winter and raise their young in safety from predators. Their chisel-like teeth can also provide them with the ability to fight off some predators. Now, beavers also have a number of adaptations that may help them be strong winner, uh, swimmers, excuse me. They're winners, all right. But swimmers, their wide, flat tails function as a rudder, helping them control the direction through the water. In addition to that, the flat tails are slapped on the water when there's danger to their fellow beavers, giving a warning to their family and neighbors. Now, some often uh, awesome photographs of beavers can be seen in this book entitled Busy Beavers by M. Barbara Brownhill from National Geographic. That same graphic detail is accomplished through illustrations in this book, Beavers by Helen M. Moore, illustrated by Terry Tallis. Both books take the reader into an amazing world of beavers and illustrate how they can use their well equipped set of adaptations to alter their environment to meet their unique needs. Let's take some time to review these excellent books. Now, Busy Beavers has a photograph on the cover showing a beaver at work cutting down a tree. This photo here shows two beavers swimming underwater to the entrance of the lodge they constructed. So I'll pause so you can see this photo of the beavers swimming through the water, going up into their lodge. There it is. Now we'll go to another one, and this one shows a beaver nursing her kit inside the lodge. So I'll pause while you get to see that. That's in that same book. Now the book relies on excellent photographs to illustrate the fascinating lives of beavers, but it does include one drawn illustration, though, and this one shows the dam and the lodge as well as the uh, surroundings of the beavers. Now, the book Beavers, and that's the name of this book, it just named Beavers. The book Beavers relies on the outstanding illustrations of Terry Tallis to take us into the world of beavers, and you can see this work on the cover. Now, this is one of my favorites here. It shows the Beaver Lodge, including underwater access and the space that's left for the beavers inside the lodge. Now, Talus also illustrates the construction of the beaver dam, which creates the pond for that lodge. So let's see that one. You can see on that page exactly what I just described. So there are many other great illustrations that show all aspects of the life of beavers. Writer Helen H. Moore uses clear, simple, engaging text that helps the reader gain a great appreciation for beavers, nature's engineers, and construction workers. I'll have the ISBNs of both books on my website, letscreate.org. Now, both of these books 
It can help the reader learn a great deal about these engineers of nature. Even if English skills are limited, indeed, these books themselves may help you improve your English reading proficiency. Now, in the case of beavers, we can see a connection between their physical adaptations and their behavior adaptations. Now, thinking back on those hard, sharp teeth, the action they take with these teeth to cut down trees is a behavior adaptation. So that's what the animal does. It's action that helps it survive and thrive in its environment. Now, their unusual tail also gives us a clue as to their behavior adaptations. They have to move that tail to steer them to their desired direction using that tail. They have to slap that tail on the water to give a warning to other beavers in their group. By the way, this guy's really popular. So episodes 64 and 65 are all about physical adaptations, how to find information, how to recognize adaptations, and how to use the right connecting words to relate that cause-effect relationship between an animal's adaptation and the advantage the adaptation gives them. Episode 66 changes the focus to behavior adaptations. Now that leaves us only one more part of the animal report, that something special that led you to the animal you chose to research. It could be from an earlier part of a report or perhaps from an experience you had with this animal or an observation you had, either directly or through some kind of media. This part often leaves the objective reporting based on science work a little behind and can simply refer to your own response or preference. Now, it shouldn't escape entirely into, into fantasy, yet this part can be a little more subjective. A listener may hear something like, this is what I really love about this animal, or some other personal response. My calling beavers, engineers, and construction workers reveal the personal context, uh, context in which I admire those animals. Now, the only other advice I have for writing your report is to have fun with it. Now, doing this work in your target language is likely to be challenging, and you have to, it'll have its share of frustration. But you can also focus on the joy of learning about the world of nature. You get to indulge your love of animals. Now, don't worry about writing a perfect report. Mistakes are not to be feared, rather to be learned from. You'll get better with experience, and you've already ramped up your English by struggling to report information in your own words. Now, this review of the Animal Report Project includes a dizzying list of past episodes that focused on different parts of the report. Don't worry about remembering that information. I have it posted on a chart on my website, letscreate.org that correlates these episodes with the report topics. Visit that website for all the support materials for this episode, as well as for all episodes of Ramping Up Your English. And with that, we conclude segment two of episode 76. 